What's up guys, Asian here with the 5.3.2 patch notes. Uh, so I have read these over already uh, while I was in class earlier today. Uh, so this is not quite as raw of a reaction as you're going to get, because uh, I already know it's in the patch notes. Um, but you will be hearing me possibly rant a little bit in these patch notes uh, just due to uh, one of the changes that they decided to make. So as a reminder, 5.3.2 is the third week of the PTS, and this is normally where we start seeing some balance changes based on feedback that they get during the first week of the PTS and also changes that they might have had planned for the PTS but didn't have time to implement. The fourth week and fifth week of the PTS may see more balance changes, uh, but that's really dependent on how the developers feel about how everything is balanced right now. Uh, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get started here. Um, so 5.3.2, uh, oh, so one of the things, uh, for those of you guys who are unaware of how the PTS cycle works, it's two weeks NA copies, two weeks EU copies, and then it goes back to NA. So right now, uh, if you are on PCEU, uh, you will have all your characters there. So for people who main PCNA like me, we'll have to make templates. So just keeping that in mind uh, if you are uh, new to the PTS cycles. Um, so they're getting some more Jester's Festival testing in. Uh, a couple of changes, uh, just a couple of fixes here. Clockwork City, let's just uh, fix an issue here. Uh, Fang Lair, this doesn't seem to be much of a change here. It's not a big nerd. It's not a nerf at all. It's just more visual stuff. Uh, correct sound impact, so it doesn't make a big change here. Herald Storm, some of the new dungeons. I have not done the new dungeons yet, uh, so if you're interested in kind of seeing the new dungeons, I recommend, I believe, Alcast has a good video, and I believe, I want to say Nephis also has done the new dungeons on the PTS. Uh, so if you're interested in those, I recommend checking those two guys out. Um, I'm currently not planning on doing the dungeons on the PTS right now, uh, mainly because our fourth person who normally does dungeons with us, uh, his internet's really bad, so he doesn't want to spend a week downloading the PTS. Um, so they did make a couple of balance changes here for the new dungeons. Uh, and let's see, Morrowind, so the Refabrication Committee, they increased the minimum range at which the Reclaimer can summon Ruined Fabricants to the fight. Those are the bombers on the triplet bosses. This was a point of feedback that we did give to the devs uh, when we tried out the VHOF nerfs, um, so I'm glad to see that they did make that change here. Uh, it should make it a lot easier to progress at the very least for the, on the triplets and also make uh, one of the achievements there a little bit easier to obtain. Arsinium, an issue with a quest, and now to the meat of the content changes here, combat and gameplay. Uh, so they're continuing to take a look at these blocks, uh, this sort of block activation. So remember in 5.3.0, they kind of changed how the block animation works just to kind of make it more fluid, so to speak. Uh, but that did introduce a couple of changes uh, where when you might not be getting block up fast enough compared to how it is on live. So they're still trying to you know, finesse all these sort of like weird one-off situations where uh, block might not be being put up in, in the right time. Uh, fixed visual issue with Path of Darkness. Uh, fixed visual issues with Fungal Growth. Uh, fixed issues with the Werewolf Introduction Quest. Uh, itemization and item sets. Uh, so these three, four sets will now appropriately react to your block state to display their functions. Uh, so Dune Ripper Scale, Frozen Watcher, Grave Guardian, Hist Bark. Aegis Caller, which is the new medium armor set, which uh, a lot of us were calling the AoE Reliquent, uh, has been nerfed. So they reduced the duration of the set to 11 seconds from 12 seconds, and they increased the cooldown to 12 seconds from 10 seconds. They also reduced the damage tick to 3730 per tick versus 4880 per tick. So this ends up being about a 30% nerf to the overall damage potential of Aegis Caller. Uh, I am still going to be testing this uh, versus something like New Moon Acolytes. Uh, so I'm probably going to do something like put the trial dummy in the middle of like eight, three million dummies and just kind of see uh, what sort of AOE DPS I'm able to do over the course of maybe like a minute to two minutes. Uh, and that will also take a look at sustain and things like that. So I'll probably compare, uh, pair it up with something like Lacestes or maybe VO. Uh, so be on the lookout for that. Um, I don't think this nerf is necessarily going to kill Aegis Caller, but it's going to be a little bit harder to recommend running Aegis Caller compared to a set like New Moon Acolyte. Uh, I will have to do the tests and kind of give you guys my thoughts on uh, those two sets because those two sets look like they're going to be competing for uh, AoE trash sets. Uh, Doom Ripper Scale, the increased amount of armor the sets grants to 5310. 
uh, elf bane, they fix an issue where the set was not increasing in duration of wall of fire or its morph. So uh, it does seem like the elf bane changes might be here to stick, might be uh, sticking. Uh, so we'll see how it plays out in the fourth and fifth week of the PTS. Uh, but with elf bane is not changing at all, then mag decays are looking pretty damn sexy for the next patch. They might be very competitive with stamina DPS minus stamina necromancers, obviously. Uh, Iceheart, they reduced the damage shield of the set uh, to 6,050 from 8,600. They reduced the damage tick to 500 from 770, and they increased the cooldown to 12 seconds from 6 seconds. More on that in a little bit. Uh, Yalnir's Nightmare, they fixed an issue where the stun and damage from the set could be dodged in some instances. Uh, so they don't want you to dodge it. They intentional. The intention is to be having those defensive bonuses or blocking when the fifth stack appears, because there is a telegraph that kind of shows you if you're going to get punched. Mother Cianite, I have no idea how to pronounce this, uh, Seanate, I don't know. Uh, they reduced the duration and cooldown of the set to 6 seconds each, down from 10 seconds each. Uh, increased the shield value to 5,000 from 3,000, and the set now also restores 600 magicka if the shield is broken. So this is the Monster Helm set, one of the new Monster Helm sets, I should say, uh, that provides a damage shield while you are channeling an ability. Uh, so the damage shield now lasts for 5,000. And the cooldown, or should I say, the, the shield is now 5,000, so you get a 5k damage shield. Duration is 6 seconds, uh, and the cooldown is 6 seconds. And if the shield is broken at all, you get the 600 magicka back. So you just get that one-time damage shield. Uh, a little bit more on this in a little bit. Uh, or this is mainly being compared to Iceheart. Uh, and uh, I have some pretty strong opinions on the changes that they've made to this set and Iceheart. Unchained Aggressor, they reduced the duration of the set's bonus to 6 seconds from 9 seconds, and they reduced the cooldown to 16 seconds from 21 seconds. They also fixed an issue where the Major Berserk from the set was not affected by your world's guidance. So if we go over here, uh, let me just look up the set really quickly here. Uh, should this be... Uh, so the Unchained Aggressor set, uh, so the five piece after breaking free, you gain Major Berserk for now it'll be six seconds, increasing your damage down by 25%, and now it'll uh, cool down to 16 seconds. Uh, so a little bit of a change here. Uh, overall, I believe this is going to be a, a slight nerf to the uptime. Uh, there was, I think, uh, the dev comments here, um, that it was easy, too easy to like practice on cooldown, uh, so they decided to kind of reduce the cooldown and also reduce the duration here. Then Vicosa, this is a pretty nice change here. I'm sure you guys probably have seen Nevis' video taking a look at the initial Vicosa nerf. Uh, but the set now reduces the target's weapon and spell damage by up to 200% for 5 seconds with a 15 second cooldown. Rather than reducing it by up to 268 for 8 seconds with a 12 second cooldown. Uh, so they fixed an issue where the set did not replace itself if another source was applied. Uh, and it would now apply the most powerful version of the set to the target if two sources are applied at the same time. Why you would have two sources of Vicosa in a given fight, I don't know, but apparently that was an issue. Um, so the Vicosa set, the initial change was to reduce weapon and spell damage by 268 for 8 seconds with the 12 second cooldown. That was actually weaker than the weakening enchant. So I believe the weakening enchant, uh, I don't know if it's 452 or 386, um, but an infused weapon damage uh, weakening enchant was stronger than Vicosa. So that didn't really make much sense. Um, so now, uh, right now on live, it gives out Major Maim, which is really useful in certain scenarios. I believe it gives it out for 3 seconds with a, I want to say it's a 12 second cooldown or something like that. Uh, but now it reduces weapon and spell damage by up to 20% for 5 seconds with a 15 second cooldown. So this should be, it's definitely a free buff, uh, so it's not quite as strong as Major Maim. Major Maim is a 30 second or 30% reduction to damage dealt. So this might not be as strong against certain bosses because you're reducing a weapon and spell damage by a percentage rather than just reducing just damage incoming. Uh, so that really would highly depend on the boss's weapon and spell damage uh, and then how much you're reducing it by to kind of give it an accurate comparison to Major Maim. It'll be very difficult to tell whether this is going to be stronger or weaker compared to Major Maim. For the most part, I believe it'll probably be a little bit weaker compared to how it is on live, but it's definitely stronger than it once was. So I think this is a very good middle ground if the idea is to make Major Maim a little bit more difficult to obtain. 20% reduction on weapon and spell damage is still a pretty hefty reduction, plus it can stack on top of Major Maim. So if you have another source of Major Maim, maybe through like the Templar's Nova, you can all stack this up and you can get some pretty nice damage uh, reduction this way. So I think this is a pretty uh, good sort of compromise for Vico. 
and then they fixed a couple of things here uh so not really much here to talk about so going back to the ice heart and mothers i'm just going to pronounce this shawnate uh changes why the hell did they change ice heart this way I'm fine with the first two changes, reducing the damage shield and reducing the damage. I think that's fine because um, people like to use Ice Heart when they're progressing the Trinity achievements. So those are things like, uh, basically those are no death speed run hard mode achievements, both in dungeons and in trials. So things like IR, Griffin Heart, uh, TikTok. A lot of groups use Ice Heart just to make it a little bit easier. Now that's not necessarily saying that it is the best strategy because you still have to be able to do damage. So you're basically giving up damage for survivability. Um, so I, th I personally have always felt that Ice Heart, as it is on live right now, is that nice middle ground between survivability and damage. You're not getting a ton of damage out. It's only 770 base damage per tick, and it's only within melee range, so it's not always going to be ticking. And the damage shield is also pretty nice, 8600. It's not super strong. It's not like you're getting a barrier every six seconds, um, but it's still decent enough uh, to help survive give you a little bit of survivability the six second cooldown you know was pretty decent uh it's not too long not too short um and overall i felt like ice heart was really balanced overall for kind of the purposes why you would run ice heart basically now though there's really no reason to run the ice heart a 12 second cooldown is incredibly long uh the damage shield is 6k if it was a 6k damage shield on a six second cooldown okay I'd, I'd i'd be okay with that it still sort of fits that mold of giving up some damage for additional survivability and it's not that big of a drop but when you do basically double the cooldown and then you decrease the damage shield there's no longer any reason to run ice hurt anymore and i don't see why you would nerf this set down so basically right now it's just a decon set now uh with these changes in my opinion uh there's no point in doing using ice heart anymore if you're going for those trinity achievements 12 seconds is just too long of a cooldown for too small of a damage shield for a 6k damage shield again a six second cooldown on a 6k damage shield that's it's, it's clearly a nerf you know it's still a little bit over a uh 25 nerf but it's still reasonable. You're still giving up damage and you're gaining some survivability. And it's reliable survivability. Now, though, every 12 seconds doesn't really make much sense. And then you combine that with what they did with Mother Shiana. Shawnate, which they basically buffed it. So they increased the damage, the value of the damage to the 5,000. And then they make it restore magicka if the shield is broken. Now, this is only on channeled abilities. So not many casters are going to be able to use this. This is, uh, this, this is definitely more of a... Um, Oops, uh, this is definitely more of a Magicka set. So, I don't know. It just doesn't feel right. Um, they basically buffed a set that they're that's coming out, and they nerfed a set that was ostensibly being you know compared against uh, because Mother Shawn it gives you that shield um, while you're doing an, an ability. Um, it just I don't understand why they nerfed Ice Heart. So. As it is on live, or I should say, as it was in 5.3.0 and 5.3.1, you had one good balanced set for what you were using it for, and then you had one bad set. Mother Shauna is just, it's still a bad set. You're only getting a 5k damage shield on a channeled or a cast time ability. Yes, you get some magicka back when the shield is broken, but it's just a one-time magicka bonus every six seconds. So if you're doing a channel ability every six seconds, uh, you're either a Templar and execute using JB, uh, or you're like a bow bow build but the one piece here is max magica so you wouldn't be running mother shawn it anyways um so it doesn't really make much sense this set is still bad mother shawn is still a bad monster helm set to run there is no reason to run mother shawn at all now there's no point in running ice heart either so basically instead of giving us one bad set and one decent set like it's not a great set it's decent in the situations where you'd be using it now they just gave us two really bad Maj Helm sets and for what reason um i mean are i mean yes people are using ice heart to kind of if you want to call it cheese cheese trinity achievements but they still have to do the damage they still need to get that damage high enough to get that speed run time and obviously to clear certain mechanics so again i think ice heart was a very good balance between survivability and that sort of giving up some damage and now they decided to nerf it. And it's a very, very big nerf. They not only nerfed the damage, they nerfed the cooldown as well. And then they buffed a set that that's just coming out. But it's still a shit set. So I don't understand why they did this. I think it's dumb. Um, I mean, 
if they kept the cooldown in six seconds, I'd be okay with the changes to iHeart. But the way it is right now, there's no reason to run iHeart anymore. And now people who are progressing through these strange achievements, whether that's dungeon achievements or trial achievements, now they're going to have to figure out some other way of progressing. Getting that additional survivability while balancing that out with the amount of damage that they're outputting. Um, there's always the barrier spam, yes. Uh, I think they should probably, if they want to really stamp down on people who are cheesing these no death achievements they should look a barrier not ice heart um but that's besides the point and that's a topic for a different video if you guys want to want me to go over that stuff so overall uh these changes not that drastic i mean overall this dlc was not marketed as a big combat rebalance there this is more of a performance year for them the next uh chapter graymore that's probably going to be a much bigger combat balance sort of reorder here but right now uh i won't say i'm not optimistic i will say that it's looking very bland right now when it comes to combat uh as far as i can remember it's been about a year or we're going we're coming up to a year since elsewhere is going to be released here uh once this is released and we get gray more and the Meta hasn't really changed too much. Stamina Necromancers are still best. You still want Magic Necromancers if you go on Magic or DPS. Yeah, they changed Major Vulnerability a little bit, but overall, combat, this PvE side is still pretty stale, pretty much where it has been. So hopefully, you know, they take some of uh, what endgame players are saying to heart, especially that Ice Heart change. A lot of people are, are just blasting the Ice Heart changes on the discords I'm in. Um, but overall, I'm not optimistic, but I'm also not a pessimist pessimistic either uh, concerning the combat changes it just feels very bland and that's kind of where it should be sitting right now because again this patch wasn't really advertised as a big combat rebalance it's more of a performance change um, but let me know what you guys think of the uh, patch notes down below uh, in the comment section uh, link to the patch notes in the description below uh, and that pretty much wraps it up hope you guys enjoyed this video let me know again down in the comments what you guys think and i will see you guys in the next dungeon